from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, winner of the Southern Oregon Television Award for the Program of the Year and the Award for Best Educational Program. I'm the host and producer, John Letts. Ramping Up Your English is an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds. Ramping Up Your English is also for people of all ages. If you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English and want to reach higher levels of proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is animals. This is segment one of episode 70. In a previous episode, we became acquainted with two magnificent birds that were pushed to the edge of extinction. In today's episode, we explore various efforts to protect animals. Extinction is a natural element of evolution, but the rate of animals becoming extinct has increased dramatically since the Industrial Revolution. Zoo books, the most recent manifestation of the revolution, has had a negative impact on the habitats of animal and plant life. Now, you may be shocked that some of your favorite animals are pictured here. For each of them, there are scores of plants and humble creatures that support these animals, and they're also in danger of becoming extinct. And guess who's at the top of the pyramid? That's right, people also depend on the diversity of life. Now, these pages illustrate how some of the toxic things we make and use works its way through the food chain, spelling sickness, and doom for animals near the top of the pyramid. All these harmful elements are likely to increase with the human population, which is growing at a tremendous rate. So it's all clearly laid out in this edition of Zoo Books, their Endangered Species Edition. It lists the organizations that are working to prevent extinctions from happening in the first place. Membership in these groups support efforts to regulate harmful activities and fund projects that help endangered species to survive. Organizations like the National Wildlife Federation and Nature Conservancy are large enough to have a major impact, both politically and on the ground projects that help wildlife. Both of these organizations and others perform vital scientific work that makes them valued partners to state and federal agencies that are tasked with managing land in accordance with federal and state law. I'll have this list posted on my website, letscreate.org. Just navigate to the episode 70 page. Our last episode focused on the system of wildlife refuges that provide critical habitat to certain animals in need of that habitat during a certain time of their life cycle. In this episode, we'll explore more bird life and learn, what we'll learn is how to find information on the animal's conservation status. We'll also provide some simple wording for reporting on the conservation status. Let's start by learning more about birds from this video. For millennia, the envy of mankind soaring through the heavens Birds never had the dream of flying, while people could only imagine the freedom. In Rocky Mountain High, John Denver sang, You know he'd be a poorer man if he never saw an eagle fly. Well, seeing bald eagles is an enriching experience. This pair at Juneau, Alaska, enchanted us just looking out our hotel window. The bald eagle is the symbol of the United States, 
It's also the living proof that people can make good decisions, and some government regulations bring about critical outcomes. As with other birds of prey, bald eagle populations plummeted in the lower 48 states. They became a rare sight, even for those living outside of cities. The reason? A pesticide called DDT. It made their eggs fail. Also, some people shot and even poisoned bald eagles. The U.S. Congress banned DDT and passed laws against killing bald eagles by any means. Slowly, their populations increased. Today in Oregon and many other states, sighting a bald eagle is not nearly as rare, yet no less memorable. Bald eagles mate for life. Their young are called eaglets. The white head and yellow beak show their mature. In the Salish Sea, the surf scoter is an example of an aquatic bird. These scoters are taking off. Perhaps the most viewed bird along the coast is the seagull. There are many species of seagull. Their diet is vast, taking their nutrition from fish and other sea creatures. They dine just as well on land, finding seaweed and crustaceans on the beach. Seagulls are often seen a long way from the ocean, taking advantage of inland food sources. While seagulls are not a rare sight, this one is rare. A pure white seagull is not a common sight. Our guides in the San Juan Islands had never seen one like this. Not everyone can say they've seen a pure white gull, but we can, and so can you. The double-crested cormorant also lives near the San Juan Islands, as well as other areas of the Northwest. Cormorants and water just go together. Cormorants get their food from the water, and their oilless feathers need to be dried out in the sun. That's why they're often seen perched with their wings spread. The great blue heron is also seen in this area. Another important bird that lives on the coast is the California pelican. These nesting pelicans are at Pismo Beach. Back at the Salish Sea, the water is sometimes a riot of aquatic birds. These aquatic birds have their own swimming pool. They're part of the animals people can see at Wildlife Safari in Winston, Oregon. These pink flamingos are also there. In the wild, pink flamingos are found in Africa and in the Yucatan of Mexico. These graceful birds get their pink color from the shrimp they eat. Check out the webbed feet on this bird. Not all birds are found near the water. This great horned owl makes its home in the forest. It's part of the education outreach for an organization called Wildlife Images. A volunteer for Wildlife Images tells Southern Oregon students about barn owls during the Bear Creek Watershed Symposium. And they can tell which side, how wide, how far, how back the sounds go. What's really neat is uh, the barn owl can tell the difference of sound hitting one side of the ear to the other up to a millionth of a second. Now, if you ever look at videos or something, or have you ever seen an owl hunting? They're moving their heads around like this. They're doing that so the sound is hitting both sides of their head at the same time, both ears. And that way they know, even if the animal is underneath brush or underneath snow, they're looking at exactly what they're hunting. The owls have the most sensitive hearing amongst all the birds, and the barn owls actually got the most sensitive hearing amongst all the owls. Now the dark-eyed owls are the ones that come out in the middle of the night. Those are the nocturnal ones. 
Like I said, if you look at their feet, have you seen the other uh, birds of prey out there? Their feet, they've got the three toes and then the one in the back. The kids were all ears, and it is amazing what owls can do. And owls can turn their heads quite a ways away around. And they can do that because they actually have seven more bones in their neck than we do. Don't they have 17? What's that? Don't they have 17? They have 14 in their neck. And that allows them to turn, depending on the owl, anywhere from 180 degrees to 270 degrees. Which is like all the way back, or all the way back, plus a little half way more like that. And they need to do that because they don't really have eyeballs. They're not round like ours. They're actually kind of flat and they have bone sockets that doesn't allow their eyes to be moved from side to side like we can move our eyes. So that's why they have to turn their heads so far. They have to turn their heads in order to see side to side. Not surprising. The best place to find a barn owl is in a barn. They hunt at night with their sensitive hearing and sharp eyesight. Even the shape of their face helps funnel the sound to their ears. The soft feathers on their wings allow them to approach prey undetected. If you find a barn owl roosting in the rafters of a barn, look down at your feet. You'll find what may look like owl turds on the floor. These cylinder-shaped objects are not scat. These are called owl pellets. Owl pellets are regurgitated, thrown up through the owl's mouth. The owl's prey is digested in the stomach, but the bones and feathers aren't digested. They're vomited out. If you examine owl pellets, you can see what the owl has eaten. This bird is another Oregon native and another ambassador for teaching people about wildlife. This is a red-tailed hawk. They are often seen in trees or other high places, their hawk eyes looking below for prey. Only this red-tailed hawk is blind in one eye. It's a good example of the work that Wildlife Images does. They are experts at wildlife rehabilitation, helping wounded wildlife heal and return to the wild. When this hawk was returned to the wild, it promptly flew into a building. Well, since it can't very well survive like that, it became one of the animals that help Wildlife Images educate the public about the wildlife with which we share this beautiful area. Red-tailed hawks are widely distributed across the United States. Their color varies by region and even within the same region, the same region they share with other red-tailed hawks. Their eyesight is legendary. They can see tiny rodents like voles and field mice from incredible distances. Their sharp, pointed beaks are perfect for tearing prey apart so they can swallow them. A notable adaptation are these sharp claws. That's what delivers the death blow to their prey. The same claws can deliver the prey to their nests for their chicks. In the air, on water, or in the trees, birds are animals worth observing. They can teach us a great deal about wild animals.